Here's everything that you need to know to make your Emily OP without any of the BS. Let's get started. Most of Emily's damage comes from her skill, so you want to prioritize leveling that first. And her burst also deals good damage, so you'll want to level that next. You will want to crown both talents over time. If you are planning to use Emily on field, you'll want to level her normal attacks as well, but they will be the lowest priority as they do still deal pretty low damage. Emily is primarily a sub DPS, so her combo most of the time will just be casting either her skill or burst then swapping our field. In your first rotation, you will start with casting her skill, as it does need to be cast at least once to get her lamp out for the first time. Then, later in the rotation and or in subsequent rotations, you can cast her burst to deal its good AoE damage, but also to refresh the lamp and reposition it, without ever having to cast her skill again. Which is ideal, since the lamp would go back to level 1 if cast again through the skill. But, casting Emily's burst can require building high amounts of energy recharge, so you can just cast it every other rotation if need be. And for on-field DPS Emily, her normal attacks are a 4 hit combo string, but the 3rd and 4th hit are extremely slow, so I recommend doing either N2D or N2C. Emily's artifact sets are very simple. If there's no one else on the team holding 4-piece deep boards, then unfinished reverie and 4-piece deep boards will be equivalent to each other on her. With deep boards be being better against enemies with high danger resistance. If there is someone else holding the deep board set, then unfinished reverie is by far Emily's best set. And alternative options are 4-piece golden troop and 2-piece 2-piece sets. These are quite far behind, and Emily is a pure sub-DPS, so you really want to be optimizing her damage as much as you can. And for energy requirements, if you are trying to burst every rotation on Emily, assuming she is solo Dendro, which she will be most of the time, she can need between anywhere from 170 to 200% energy recharge, depending on how, how high the team's particle generation is. And if using her signature weapon, this can go down to about 130 to 140 percent. And if you are using Emily on field, she'll be catching most of our particles, so she'll only need between 125 to 150 percent, and shouldn't need any more than 100 to 120 percent with her signature weapon. And speaking of Emily's signature weapon, Lumidos Elegy is by far Emily's best weapon, especially if you want to burst on her every rotation as it refunds a lot of energy back to her, on top of giving her a bunch of damaging stats. Since Emily is a pure sub-DPS, it's definitely worth getting your hands on this weapon if you want to maximize her value on your account, but if you can't get it, you can pick from other weapons on the chart, with Engulfing Lightning, Homa, Calamity Queller, and Jade Spear being the best alternative 5 stars, and Missive Wind Spear being the best accessible free-to-play option. Now for Emily's teams, she is quite restricted, as she does need there to be a burning aura on the enemy, otherwise her damage completely tanks and she won't be contributing anything to her team, so you need to have a consistent source of off-field pyro application, which is quite restricting, but there are some teams that can provide this that Emily does fit very well into. Firstly, I have on-field Emily. Emily in her kit directly itself doesn't have an incentive to be used on-field, but, using her on field can still actually be very good, because it allows her to benefit from Bennett's buff to get much higher damage, which she usually can't since she doesn't snapshot. She will also be utilizing Bennett C6 so that her normal attacks are applying the pyro needed for burning as well as a bit of extra damage. And since Emily will be on field catching most of her particles, her energy requirements will also be much lower, thus allowing her to do even more damage. The team I recommend for this is Emily, Farina, Bennett, Kazua. Farina is ideal, as an attack scaling dendro unit, Emily doesn't have too many buffs that she can utilize, but Farina is one that she certainly can, and Farina will also be vaporizing her own damage. And Kazua can provide grouping so that Emily's burst and clear do colognes from our A1 passive can hit all the enemies. 
And you'll actually want Kazuha on the Deport set and not Viridescent, as VV does not buff Emily, whom is the one doing the vast majority of the team's damage. Kazuha isn't actually providing much buffing of his own here though, since his damage bonus is buffing Farina rather than Emily, so using Zhongling would result in higher damage overall, but I do highly recommend Kazuha for his grouping so that Emily and Farina can be hitting multiple enemies. And as you'll see from the calc, this is actually a legitimately very strong team. It's actually the highest DPS Emily team that I've calculated. In fact, it's also just straight up the highest DPS for any Dendro team that I've ever calculated. So if you really like Emily and want an excuse to play her on field, you are absolutely justified in doing so, as I do believe it to be her strongest use case right now. But if you are going to play Emily this way, I would definitely recommend picking up her weapon, since it is such a large increase. Now for sub-DPS Emily teams, first we have Melt teams. Having Burning and Melt teams with a Cryo DPS can be nice, as the extra pyro, pyro application from Burning Reaction provides, allows slower pyro pliers such as Toma to be sufficient. So this is nice for characters such as Risley, using a team of Risley, Emily, Toma, and Bennett. Toma is actually higher DPS than using Zhongling, as the off-field pyro here, since you want the pyro unit to be using deep words, and Zhongling loses a ton of damage without emblem, to the point where Toma is just better. This team is about 5% less DPS than using Farina instead of Emily and also using Zhongling instead of Toma, but that's a pretty minor loss in exchange for freeing up Bennett, no longer having to worry about Zhongling's cringe energy, to also getting to use a shielder. But if you already have investment into Farina's constellations, then this team will of course not be nearly as strong. I also did try Melt Ganyu with Emily, but I didn't like it at all. The problem was Ganyu can't use Toma, so she had to rely on Deya instead, and the Deya Circle Impact plus super long cooldown on her skill made rotations extremely awkward and inflexible, so I would actually just not recommend trying to use Emily with Ganyu. And in addition to Melt Teams, there's also Forward Vaporize with a Hydro DPS. Burn burning is particularly nice here, because the Dendro Aura helps prevent Hydro from overtaking and becoming the Aura, as long as the Hydro application isn't super fast. Currently, the only team like this I'd recommend is Nouvellet, Emily, Zhongli, and Zhongling. This is pretty strong for a Farina-less Nouvellet team, possibly one of his best teams without Farina, but it's worth noting that Emily's damage without a grouper is going to be mostly single target, so while she will be a good sub-DPS in single target here, she won't really be doing much in AoE, which is a shame since AoE is where Nouvellet shines the most. I have also tried using Farina instead of Zhongli in this team, but the Hydro application was too fast for Emily's danger application, so there was actually very few forward vaporizes here. So I definitely wouldn't recommend using Emily in a Nouvellet team over a Farina team for him, but if you are looking up looking to free up your Farina, it's a good choice. Then we also have quote unquote mono pyro teams where we will just replace Zhongling with Emily. So for example, a Linny team with Linny, it is particularly worth noting that Linny can use the Unfinished Reverie set with Emily, which is very nice since without Farina, the Four Piece Hunter set is kinda scuffed on Linny. And a team like Linny, Emily, Bennett, Kazuha does actually come out slightly ahead of Zhongling here, but keep in mind that Zhongling has more AoE, and she can also get extra hits in single target, so in practice, Zhongling might actually perform better, unless you have investment on Emily such as her signature weapon, then she will be way better than Zhongling. I did also compare Emily to Zhongling for Model Pyro Alachino. Zhongling was higher DPS on paper, but in practice, Emily has nice advantages, as she is much more flexible to use in a rotation to be able to get her damage going with either her skill or burst. And of course, if you have Emily's weapon or C1, she will be a lot better than Zhongling. And another team archetype I want to cover quickly is Quickborn, or as some people call it, Overborn. This is a team archetype that uses fast electro op application alongside burning. The point of this is that if you overload away a burning aura fast enough, it won't remove the quicken aura before you can refresh it, 
just you'll still be getting essentially full quicken uptime and these teams also get a lot of overloads because they get two overloads per pyro application instead of one an overload from the pyro unit and then another from the electro for these teams to work out properly it does need very fast electro application so it's not going to work out with a dendro dps like al -Haytham, but instead we'll want an on-field electro dps the character I'm sure many people are wondering about in this team is Sino, since Emily won't have Nahida's multi-wave issues. And the team for this would be something like Sino, Emily, Toma, Fischl. And the team functions exactly how it's supposed to, but the problem is there's no buffer in the team at all. And Sino deals extremely poor damage relative to his field time without having buffs. With that said, I can definitely see this being the future for Sino's teams heading into Natlan, if we had an actual good off-field pyro unit, which we can reasonably expect with the pyro archon, that would make a monumental difference for this team. A better off-field electro, such as an electro healer or shielder with some additional utility, would also be the icing on the cake, but that's not too likely to come anytime soon, at least not as likely compared to the pyro. But in that land, I can definitely see Sino, Emily, Pyro Archon, and Kuki being possibly as good as Sino's Quick Bloom teams without the multi wave issues. But as of right now, the team just does way too little damage. Now, for Emily's constellations, C1 is her second strongest, gives her 20% damage bonus to her skill and her A1 passive as well, while also allowing her to proc her A1 even more often likely around about 3 extra times over a 20 second rotation. Since Emily's A1 does deal a ton of damage, this comes out to about a 40% damage increase compared to C0, which is tied with Chiari for the biggest C1 increase in the game. C2 is free deep boards, so it's very nice if you don't have anyone on the team using the set already, also just very nice for highly dendro resistant enemies. C3 increases her skill by 3 levels, it's not a very large increase though, since Emily also has a lot of damage coming from her passive and burst. Then C4 is, surprisingly, Emily's strongest constellation out of all, increasing her damage by more than 40%. What Emily C4 basically does is, her burst now lasts 4.8 seconds instead of 2.8, and it hits triple the amount of times that it did before C4, so it literally triples her burst damage. At C4, her burst will actually be doing more damage than her skill itself, while doing all of that damage in just 4.8 seconds, so this is very front-loaded AoE damage. Basically at C4, you can think of Emily's burst like an Ayaka burst, lasting for a few seconds while doing very high damage over that period of time. Seeing a C4 this strong is quite surprising, as C4s are usually pretty mid or just bad. C5 increases said burst by 3 levels, but it's still not a very large increase, since her damage is still split almost evenly between skill, passive, and burst. And then her C6. At first, this constellation might read like it turns Emily into a true on-field dendro DPS, but it doesn't. Basically what it does is, after you cast Emily's skill or burst for the first time in a rotation, you'll want to do 4 normal attacks on her, and those will do decent damage from the infusion and added attack scaling, and they will also get you 4 more cents, so you'll get 2 more A1 passive procs. This is really good, but it's nothing insane for a C6. So for how you should prioritize vertical investment into Emily, her C1 is her largest early damage increase, so I generally advise going for this first. However, while her weapon isn't quite as large of an increase, it is on a very good weapon banner, with paired with Aqua Simulacra right now, so on this current banner, I'd actually advise going for the weapon first, but generally prioritize C1, then R1. Once you have Emily at C1, R1, I'd advise stopping there unless you plan to go all the way to C4, which is the next best stopping point. You can go all the way to C6 if you want, but at C4, she's already doing hyper carry levels of damage as a sub DPS, with nearly half of that being AoE front load, so C4R1 is honestly the perfect long-term stopping point. But yeah, that covers everything I have to say about Emily. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and also comment your thoughts down below. Thanks, and goodbye.